Hi everyone. So the thought I would look at this week in the mini-series of note-taking apps is Obsidian. And what Obsidian is, is a second brain for you forever. And to achieve that, how they do it is, it's through um, a plain markdown file format, which is saved locally on your machine. And whilst you're taking your notes, you can use the great features of Obsidian, which are things like outline view, um, multiple pane view, graph view, hierarchies and structures, and various different things like that. And the excellent thing is, is that the file, you can see it, it's saved on your hard disk, wherever you choose for it to be saved. And then you can copy it, delete it, paste it. You can do whatever you want, it's yours. And it's saved in Markdown style or Markdown format. So there's no proprietary lock-ins or anything like that. So you can even open it with a plain text um, file. So what we'll do is, what, to get started, if you just download Windows, uh, Obsidian for Windows or for whatever operating system you're using, and once you get that installed and up and running, you get something, the small pop-up window, which basically allows you to open a new vault, create a new vault, or open the help vault, which includes a lot of excellent hints and tips. So definitely worth checking that out in terms of the markdown style formatting. It's got examples in there. So just to give you a, a quick, quick tutorial on that one. So what we'll do this time is just create a new vault and we'll call it testing, for example, and we will save it for the time being just on the desktop, so I can show you later that the files are saved there. So once you click, click Create, you get a nice empty window, which is basically where your notes are going to be saved. What I find useful is just to allow some a few options. Um, so for example, I like to have the plugin one. I like to have the daily notes allowed and I like to have the outline. There's a few others, you can go through them, toggle them on and off so you can see what, what they do. Um, but basically the outline and the daily notes, it's useful because what it allows you to do is then if I click to open today's daily note, it will just create today's daily note uh, already for you. So tomorrow it will create 2020 11-02. And then what I might do is, um, Thoughts of today, and then um, what I think. So, for example, um, just writing out some various different things, and it uses the markdown style format. So, one hash is heading one, two dashing is heading two. The dash um, gives you basically a list. Um, and this is not what you see is what you get type, type editor. It's, um, it's really in Markdown. And what you can do is if you click Control and the little preview icon, you can see that this is how I'm writing and this is how it appears. So for example, we'll just keep adding to the list. And then maybe we'll have... evening options, something like that, and then we'll have um, maybe just some, some faults. So for here you can see that this is how I, it, it appears to you, uh, which is legible enough already, but if you, if you prefer to see it how it appears, uh, you can use the preview window, so at least you can see that. And these you can drag and drop, so for example, if you want to put it at the bottom rather than on the side. So it's the same thing, and they're multi-scroll, so if I scroll on one, it will scroll on the other window. And for, if I click here, and I can add some more text. So again, it, it adds it automatically there. Uh, so we'll just put that back to the side. And then what I find useful as well is, or a, a positive, is you can have the outline view. So for example, I've got these notes, um, and I can quickly see what the main headings are. So this is just a bit like an index of a book. It takes the main, the main headings. So if I put, for example, a heading three, that will, will indent it under the evening one. I can do the same sort of thing for the morning one if I want another heading. And then when I click on it, it will just take me there uh, wherever I wherever I've clicked. So I just find that extremely useful. So at least you can see if you've got a long 
page note, you can quickly see what are the main sections of it. So that was useful. And then what you can what you can do is also if, rather than create a daily note, if you want, you can just create a new note by clicking the new note button. So for example, we'll just call this test note. And again, we just put some. That, for example, that's just some some text on the daily note on the test note. Um, what you can do is if you have, let's say, for example, we're here on the daily note, and we want to. Uh, we can do a backlink, which then creates a, we can create an automatic page from it. So for example, reflect on um, book X, Y, Z. So I'll put that in the square brackets. And what I can then do is I can just click Control and the link, and this will create a page for me. And then from here, what I can do is just put um, some thoughts on book. X, Y, Z, and then you can just have it however how, however you wish, and just put your notes on the book. So that's another great thing that I find, it's just so much easier. So I could have created this page with a new note, but it's, it's just even easier just to just double bracket it, or double square bracket it. You can also just create, um, for example, a link to a page. Um, for On, up, on. So for example, we'll just put motivation. I don't need to create it for the time being. It's just some thoughts. I might create a page later on. So let's say in, in two weeks' time or whatever, I think, oh, yeah, I need a page on motivation. So what we'll do is we can just do, just do the page. Correctly, and then this is some notes on motivation. Write some more. So then that's created the page. If I now go back to this page, and this will, it's now it knows that the page motivation exists, and it will just direct me to this link um, automatically, which is again it's another great thing. If um, if you think you might need a page on motivation later, or you might that's a subject that you want to look into a bit more down the line, you can just create the create the wiki link and you don't necessarily need to create the page right away, but if you then create it, it will create the link for you. What then you can do, so for example now it's motivation, so rather than motivation, let's uh, let's rename it to um, reflections. So I'll change it here, and what it comes up is, it gives you the option whether you want to update all of the links that you have linking to this page. So what we'll do is we'll just do always update for the time being, and if I go now here, it's changed, so now it's no longer thoughts on motivation, it's now thoughts on reflection, and if I go to this page, it's the same page, but now it's just called reflection. So it auto-updates the links for you, which is very useful. What you can also do, and this is in the new or the latest release, is some block linking or, or linking at block level. So what we just did here, this was linking at page level. And what we can now do, so for example, if we do square brackets and we choose whichever page, so for example, let's choose that one, and we do um, shift six, it now brings up these other various different blocks. So what we'll do is we'll just do a link to this one here. And then, so now what I can do is from the reflections page, if I click on this link here or control and click on, on this side, I can just go back to this and this will go to that exact reference um, and that exact um, bullet point or area or block where the link is linked to which again is very useful if you want to create backlinks and if you have various different articles and things and you want to link to a particular area, this is a very useful thing. You can also link to headings. So if on here, for example, we want to do a link to a heading, all we need to do is just click on the hash one and then it comes up the various different headings that you have. So for example, let's link to morning two reflections. And again, same sort of thing. I can then click on this and it will bring me to that particular section of, of that particular note. 
What's another great thing that Obsidian has is the graph view. So if we can click on the right, left hand side, second option down, it's open graph view. So what that will do is that will open the graph view of your various different notes that you have. So for example, here we don't have much, there's not much of a, of a graph, but we can see that reflections links to the today's note, uh, as does book XYZ. And then you can play around with various different filters if you only want to show existing pages or non-existing pages. So what that means is, for example, if I just create a link to page not existing, so this is a non-existent page, so it doesn't come up in the tree view. And what we can do is we can remove that. So it comes up on here. And if you want to remove the pages which do not exist, you can quickly do that. So you can play around with the filters and the display and the formats and the forces. This just changes the various different areas of where they are. And it makes more sense when you have more notes. And you can play around with it. What you can also do in terms of keeping a hierarchy, so I'll just close that, is you can create a folder. So let's call this, for example, daily notes. Sometimes what I like to do is just keep my daily notes in one particular folder, because if not, it just gets too many. Um, so I can move this. So I've created the daily notes folder. Um, I want to move this note in here. So I just click and drag. And again, it automatically tells me that two links have been updated. So I don't need to now to go through all of these notes to try and rejig or re relink each of the links. It does it automatically for me. And again, now, if I want to create a new note, I can just click on the new note, and let's say this is tomorrow's note. Um, and we can again just move that in here. Or if you, and then you can create as many folders as you wish. So for example, this might be a pro programming folder. So I, I might put all of my notes within this programming folder, and, and then that's that way I can just keep a, a sort of hierarchy whilst linking between different notes which don't necessarily have to be in the same folder. So another thing which is very useful is on the right hand side you can see just the various different areas of backlinks and uh, whether they're mentioned or not so for example on this page book xyz this is linking um, from the note from yesterday's note so we can click on it quite easily just by going on the backlink pane click on it and this will just bring us back directly to this um, to this particular note you can also have more than one note open at the same time. So for example, if we want um, thoughts of the day and some test note on the side, I can write here some notes whilst keeping this page open. Um, so if you then want another page open, um, you can do that quite easily. So you would just go onto the note itself, click Control, click on the note, and then that will open it. And then as I say, you can rejig them however you wish. So at least you can have however many notes that your eyes can see. So just to close out on this brief introduction to Obsidian, I mean, the other positive things is that it's free and that the developers are doing very quick and pushing through updates, great updates, should I have to say, every week or even quicker. Uh, very friendly, they're on the Discord, they'll chat, they'll give you ideas, they'll take all your comments on board and they're very, they seem very nice and approachable people. So it's, uh, it's a good, very good note-taking app. So I hope you found that useful. And if you've got any comments, please don't hesitate to leave them. Thanks very much for watching.